just a test because things don't seem to be working right. Bloop boop boop. Bloop doop doo. Bloop doop da Hey everybody, Michael here. Today I'm going to be giving a very brief overview of popular media in 1985. It's not just me today, uh, I also have on the phone Ramin, Erica, Molly, and Bob, and you've probably seen all of them in other Michael videos. I also have my friend Michael, who knows movies way better than I do. Let's start with books, because that's unfortunately what we all know the least about. Of the books that were published in 1985, a few really stuck out to me. Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale, Laura Numeroff's If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, John Irving's The Cider House Rules, and Patricia McLaughlin's Sarah Plain and Tall. The Handmaid's Tale is, of course, very much a part of popular culture right now. If You Give a Mouse a Cookie is still on elementary bookshelves everywhere. Hermine, is that you? You sound strange. I have a cold. Oh, anyway. I remember watching the movie version of The Cider House Rules in high school in morality class I went to an all-boys Catholic high school, and I distinctly remember Sarah Plain and Tall being read to me in school. The Newbery Medal for Children's Literature in 1985 went to Robin McKinley's The Hero and the Crown, which I read in grade school. I picked it up from the school library because there was a knight fighting a dragon on the cover. The story is about Aaron, female heir to the throne of a kingdom. She doesn't like to do more traditionally feminine things like sew and dance, and instead prefers to practice swordplay and ride her horse. She also perfects a recipe for an ointment that makes its user invulnerable to fire. I remember a, a particularly gruesome passage where the ointment doesn't work and Aaron is burned by a dragon's fire. The best children's literature doesn't shy away from the hard stuff. Molly, you sound weird too. I have a cold. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, overall, I'm grateful to have read this book as a kid. I think reading a book with a female protagonist at such an impressionable age might have helped make me who I am now. James Lapine and Stephen Sondheim won the Pulitzer Prize for Drama for their musical Sunday in the Park with George in 1985. Oh, your favorite. Yeah, it never fails to encourage me and make me cry. If you don't know it, especially if you're a creative type yourself, give it a listen. Another popular book that was published in 1985, Love in the Time of Cholera. Gabriel Garcia Marquez and Isabel Allende taught me that Latin American literature is the shit. Oh, and the Polar Express. Oh, there's our childhood. A beautiful, beautiful book that they made a stupid movie out of. Speaking of movies, let's talk about that next. I went on Ranker and looked up the top 10 movies of 85. I haven't seen any of these movies all the way through. Any? Nope. Also, Michael, you sound weird too. I have a cold. Oh, okay. Anyway, let me run through this list. Back to the Future. You haven't seen Back to the Future? Nope. And also, you sound weird. Yeah, I have a cold. Hmm. I guess it's going around. Ironically, I think Back to the Future is timeless. And that was an iconic role for Christopher Lloyd. The Breakfast Club. Oh, yes. I've never been into The Breakfast Club. I haven't seen all of it, but I really was not into it. Yeah, I just don't care. Best part of The Breakfast Club, Molly Ringwald. Worst part, everything else. The Goonies. Yes, I love that movie. Excellent movie. I didn't appreciate The Goonies until I was older. I've never really been into the parts that I've seen. It's a movie that you have to watch all the way through from the beginning to get into the characters. The action starts happening pretty quickly. Weird Science Weird Science made me gay. Like, come on, bro. That's the beginning of a porn. <laughs> I haven't seen any of that one. Don't even know what the premise is. Um, two geeks make a girl on a computer and lightning strikes it and she comes to life and she's essentially a genie. And she helps them find out that they were cool all along inside. Boy wow. This movie was bad. Even as a little kid, I remember thinking how weirdly gross and sexist it was. Okay, moving on. Rocky IV, Fletch, Witness, Pee-wee's Big Adventure, Commando, and The Jewel of the Nile. I also looked up the highest grossing films, which include most of these from the ranker listing, plus Rambo First Blood Part 2, The Color Purple. The Color Purple. Oprah Winfrey's first role. And Whoopi Goldberg's. 
Oh yeah, Whoopi's in it, too. But it was her first big role. No, she was in things before. Not really. She was around, but this was her first lead role. Anyway, the top grossing films also include Out of Africa, Cocoon, Witness, and Spies Like Us. A lot of straight white dude movies. A few other interesting films came out in 85, like the Alice in Wonderland TV film special with Carol Channing. That's the one you guys keep quoting but you've never really seen? Well, I know the Carol Channing parts. Very on brand for you to only know the Carol Channing parts. The Black Cauldron? I've never seen it. Eh, you don't need to. Bob, are you also sick? And strangely British? Yeah. Anyway, every character in The Black Cauldron feels like a we'll fill this in later. I've never seen this Disney film. I remember reading a Disney picture book made after the movie and then reading the book that all of it was based on, and thinking, wow, this is a lot more gruesome than Disney led me to believe. 85 was not a good year for Disney. They were pretty rough until The Little Mermaid came out four years later. You know what else came out in 85? Clue. Oh yes. I was waiting for this one to come up. What an underrated movie. Look, I love this movie. It's one of my favorites. But it honestly isn't a great movie. I love watching how all of the characters interact with each other, especially when they're not the focus of the scene. This isn't a perfect movie, but holy cow, there is a lot of gold here. The comic acting on display from Madeline Kahn and Tim Curry alone made this shit Oscar worthy and I won't have anyone tell me differently. Hmm, let's see, Desperately Seeking Susan. Madonna. Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Tinta Trinter. Ron, directed by Akira Kurosawa. Oh, and Teen Wolf came out in 85. 1985 was a big fucking year, and I was only two weeks old. For the entire year. Okay, let's move on to TV now. First, some notable things that happened in general. VH1 launched. Nick at Night launched. Yes. Elmo was introduced on Sesame Street. Oh, fun. Golden Girls debuted. Oh, yes. The top Nielsen-rated TV shows of the 85-86 season were The Cosby Show, Family Ties. I had an imaginary friend named Mallory after Mallory from Family Ties. Murder, she wrote, which I have fond memories of. My great-grandma was a big Murder, she wrote fan. When she would babysit me and I'd be playing in the other room, she'd call me over saying, Michael, come over, it's time for murder. And I'd watch with her. I know my grandma watched, too, but I don't think I've ever seen any of it. It's exactly what you'd expect from a crime drama starring Angela Lansbury to be. Let's see what else. 60 Minutes, Cheers, Dallas, Dynasty, Golden Girls, Miami Vice, and Who's the Boss? Those are some old shows. Okay, now for the stuff that I know much more about, music. I'm going to just project these two lists on the screen. These are Rolling Stone's Top 10 Albums of 85 and Pitchfork's Top 10 Best Albums of 85. Notice anything? Where are all the women? I do own songs from the big chair and can say that it's a pretty nice record, but agreed. Where are the women? Yep. Pitchfork's list is a little better. Better, but still not good. Where's Madonna? Like a Virgin was 1984, True Blue was 1986. Where's Cindy Lauper? She also had nothing come out in 1985. I wonder if Rolling Stone's list is worse because it's more rock-oriented. Well, Rolling Stone was more rock-oriented. At this time. At this time, yeah. But Pitchfork wasn't around at the time, they had the benefit of hindsight. At least they were smart enough to put Kate Bush at number one. Also, pop music isn't as about the album as rock music is. Pop music is all about the hits. Uh, unless you're Kate Bush. I made a playlist on Spotify of my favorite music from 1985. I'll link it on Facebook and in the description of this video on YouTube. I'll run through the list real quick. Take On Me by AHA. Oh, nice. Free Way of Love by Aretha Franklin. It's so weird and campy. I feel like all of her work after the 70s was. But she still sounds good. Always. It's the song responsible for all of Latrice Royale's car payments. Next, we have Word Up by Cameo. I never would have guessed that you actually like this song, but now that I know you do, I need to see you dance to it. Nobody needs to see me dance to anything. 
You Spin Me Round Like a Record by Dead or Alive. Ha ha, yes. Oh my god. Money for Nothing by Dire Straits. I was scandalized while listening to this the other day. There's a verse that they don't play on the radio because it has a gay slur in it. Would I Lie to You by The Arrhythmics. These Dreams by Heart. I still greatly prefer 70s Heart to 80s Heart. The entire Hounds of Love album by Kate Bush. If you want detailed thoughts from me and Ramin about this, check out our post about it on Facebook. Kyrie by Mr. Mister. I don't think I know that song. Oh, come on. Yes, you do. Kyrie lays on down the road that I must travel. What? I guess the mom rock stations in Virginia didn't play it as much as they did in Ohio. Much of Phil Collins' album No Jacket Required is on my playlist. Susudio, One More Night, Don't Lose My Number, Take Me Home. Now, speaking of mom rock. (laughs) Right? Raspberry Beret by Prince. I don't think I know that, either. Oh, come on. Yes, you do. She wore a raspberry beret. Oh, yeah, I do know that. Oh, thank God, I was about to faint. Addicted to Love by Robert Palmer. A few songs from Songs from the Big Chair by Tears for Fears. Shout, Everybody Wants to Rule the World, Head Over Heels. Voices Carry by Till Tuesday. Don't Come Around Here No More by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Oh, nice. I'm not really a huge Tom Petty fan. Neither am I, actually. But a song here or there is good. Yeah. Whitney Houston's eponymous debut album, which, you know, isn't great. What? Doesn't it have I Wanna Dance with Somebody on it? Nope. That's on a different album. This one has Saving All My Love for You, How Will I Know, and Greatest Love of All. Oh, How Will I Know must be what I was thinking of. Greatest Love of All is so cheesy. Yeah, but it's kind of great. And she doesn't really sound all that great on Saving All My Love for You. I don't know if she wasn't recorded well or if they didn't have the time to get a better take or what. When I listen through this playlist, I enjoy it, but I find myself constantly wanting it to get to the next Kate Bush song. Nothing else is as good as Hounds of Love is on this list. Last thing I want to talk about in this Media in 85 post, video games. There were some cool advancements in arcade games. Konami had a fighting game that really set the trends for their future. Atari released Paperboy in arcades with a controller modeled after bicycle handlebars. Konami released Commando, which set the trends for vertically strolling shooters. Sega released the first arcade game with a motorbike that you could control with your body called Hang On. Capcom released Ghosts and Goblins, which became one of the most popular arcades that year. A couple important games from computer games in 1985. Origin Systems released Ultima IV, Quest of the Avatar, which popularized a dynamic morality system in role-playing games. I would like to write a complaint letter to them for inspiring things like Ogre Battle's reputation system. Dragon Slayer 2 Xanadu was released, which helped set a lot of the trends in action role-playing games. And, of course, The Learning Company released The Oregon Trail. But really, all of this pales in comparison to one company's work. The Nintendo Entertainment System was released, and with it, Super Mario Bros. Honorable mention to Duck Hunt. At least with hindsight, I can confidently say that Nintendo won 1985 in video games. For a more in-depth look at Super Mario Bros., check out my video review with Erica. I'll link that in the comments. So, now that we've gone through all of this, can we draw any conclusions? I think one interesting thing that we could look at is the role of women in media in 1985. Books from that year showcased some interesting, complex, deep, and powerful female characters. Though there were movies with great female roles in 1985, a lot of the top grossing and most fondly remembered movies from the year are very male driven. TV is always sort of an interesting beast to me because in theory, it has to appeal to the widest variety of people. 1985 had some pretty strong leading female roles in TV with Claire Huxtable, Jessica Fletcher, and the cast of the Golden Girls, which as a show absolutely holds up and is still entertaining today. Then we get to the things I know more about, music and video games. Both of these fields had disappointing showings in 1985 when it came to female representation. Let's hold on to these ideas and see how they carry over into later years. I actually have a theory that I'd like to trace. Um, 
I have a feeling that female representation will reach somewhat of a high point in the mid to late 90s. I have another theory that all media was very conservative and modest um, in the early 2000s. Um, after that, I feel like we've been slowly building to better representation for women and for ethnic and racial minorities. We've also seen some increase in the, the visibility of LGBTQ characters, uh, especially lesbian and gay characters. Um, we still have a long way to go for everything, but uh, especially for trans and non-binary presentation. But I hope that we continue making forward strides. All right, thanks for watching this video. Uh, please let me know if you disagree with any of my opinions. I'm sure I missed something from 1985 that you really love. Let me know what it is so I can check it out. Also, let me know if there's anything in particular you'd like to see in future reviews. Ramin and I will be jumping around a bit to get video games and music from many different years, but we'll also be focusing a bit on media from 1986 soon. Thanks again for watching. Um, I still don't know how to end these videos, but uh, you smell really nice today.